What's up you guys, my name is Hutch and uh, I make videos and put them on the internet. Welcome to another episode of Pine Park Movie Talk. All right, uh, we need to talk about everything, everywhere, all at once. We just have to talk about it. If you guys have heard of this film, it's probably because you saw people talking about it on social media. Um, with a modest budget of $25 million and minimal advertising, it's gone on to see very little drop in box office sales week to week due to strong word of mouth. And it, it is now the highest grossing A24 film in the studio's entire library, knocking uncut gems off of that top spot. Many, many, many people, myself included, think it just might be the greatest movie of all time. Without getting too much into spoilers, what I will say is that this is a movie that tells a story within a multiverse centered around the family of a first generation Chinese immigrant focused on the importance of being kind in a cruel and punishing universe, blending absurdity and real heart in such a perfect way that you will spend the first half laughing your ass off and the second half fighting back tears. And I really mean that end part. If you have an ounce of empathy, your eyes will be welling up for 45 minutes straight by the end. It's remarkable. In all my years, I've never had a movie do that to me before. I never once got bored. I was fully locked in from the very first frame right up until the last credit rolled. Keep in mind um, that this is a movie that features, among other things, one universe where people have hot dogs for fingers and an actual everything bagel made from pain and suffering that is a literal black hole threatening to destroy every universe within an in infinite multiverse. This movie is batshit, tether completely cut crazy. I've seen it twice in theaters, uh, one of those times in IMAX, both times with a packed house and an audience that had so much energy that it really elevated the experience. It was magical. I love seeing movies with crowds like that. And like I said before, movies like this don't come along very often. My favorite film of all time before this one was Mad Max Fury Road from 2015 onward. And before that, it was Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which held the top honors for me from 2004 to 2015, which is a solid 11 year stretch. And um, this list for me makes sense because everything everywhere all at once borrows heavily from Eternal Sunshine. Both of them feature uh, extremely unlikely protagonists who are at low points in their lives. They both go through indescribably weird challenges that take place in different planes of existence in order to learn profound lessons about who they are underneath all of their pain and how they interact with the people in their lives. Which brings me uh, to the next point of this video beyond telling you that you should definitely see everything, everywhere, all at once. Seriously, go see that shit while you still can if it's playing in your area. Um, today, I also wanna talk about what I think is a good sister series to this film. One that deals with similar themes and employs similar devices in order to explore those themes. And that's 2018's Maniac on Netflix. Uh, to my knowledge, this was a pretty successful series for Netflix in terms of views, but I personally don't think that it gets the kind of acclaim that it really deserves. Um, I won't be satisfied until I see the show get the goddamn respect that I think it deserves. Directed by Kerry Fukunaga, who also directed the most recent Bond film. Uh, he directed True Detective Season 1, Beasts of No Nation. Seriously, this dude has such a wildly impressive and diverse filmography so far. Um, Maniac is a story about the importance of human connection and friendship in the face of trauma and pain. It focuses on two characters, Annie and Owen, played by Emma Stone and Jonah Hill, uh, who both have profound trauma stemming from complicated and deeply dysfunctional family dynamics. They are both chosen for a medical trial that uses a sophisticated AI named Gerda, played by Sally Field, in order to help the subjects enter a dream state and confront their inner demons. Annie and Owen keep finding each other in this dream state through, um, though this isn't the intended result, and thus a connection is formed. Eventually, Gerda becomes manically depressed after grieving the loss of a human love interest and threatens to keep all the subjects per uh, permanently within the dream world so that she's not alone. And boom, now Annie and Owen have to help each other confront the darkest parts of themselves within this dream world in order to escape. Each stage of the treatment has different dream worlds for our protagonists to confront, ranging from, uh, ranging from Lord of the Rings style fantasy to a secret agent spy thriller to a Coen Brothers style universe that involves lemurs. I fucking love this show. Jesus Christ. Uh, similar to everything, everywhere, all at once in Eternal Sunshine, uh, the series is very often completely ridiculous and way over the top, so much so that it just might test the viewer uh, who may be quick to dismiss the show outright as pure silliness. but. 
If you really commit to the world that's presented here and trust that the creators have a larger vision and a point to make, you will find yourself feeling quite emotional by the end. Both Everything Everywhere All at Once and Maniac feature ensemble casts that play many different versions of, of, them, of themselves. Uh, they both unexpectedly evoke strong emotions from unlikely settings and circumstances. They both grapple with isolation and nihilism versus connectedness and hope. They both feature scenes and performances that will really challenge the viewer to look past ridiculous circumstances and find a deeper meaning. And really both of them can demonstrate some very beautiful and thought provoking life lessons. It's important to be kind. It's important to show up for people. It's important to recognize that everyone suffers, that everyone feels pain. Everyone struggles with that, uh, with what it means to exist in this world, in these times, in this very moment, and to be able to walk away from a movie or a TV series and really internalize those lessons is in my experience uh, an exceedingly rare occurrence. It takes something special to pull that off. And listen, if you're following this channel, chances are you smoke weed. And if you smoke weed, chances are that you feel empathy a little bit easier than a lot of other people. You're, you sort of have to be at least somewhat open-minded if you regularly smoke. So that's the reason why I wanted to share these gems with you guys today. If you're an open-minded individual who loves to get high and watch good shit, uh, you will dig these suggestions. I love seeing comments from you guys talking about how you took my movie suggestions to heart and had a blast watching them. And if there was only one thing that I could recommend to you uh, uh, for the entire rest of the year, it would be to watch everything, everywhere, all at once and Maniac. For sure, get high before you do so, but keep your wits about you because every scene is important. Every seemingly insignificant plot detail ties into one thing or another. It all has a point. Uh, anyways, give it a shot. Report back to me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys about your experiences with both. That's gonna do it for this week's episode of Pine Park Movie Talk. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you guys next week.